Nessies on untouchables and untouchability social by Baba Zaib Ambedkar. Chapter 4, Part 8 After his slaughter of the demon Vritta, Indra became alarmed with the idea of having taken the life of a Brahmin, for Vritta was regarded as such, and hid himself in waters. In consequence of the disappearance of the king of gods, all affairs, celestial as well as terrestrial, fell into confusion. The rishis and gods then applied to Nahusha to be their king. After at first excusing himself on the plea of want of power, Nahusha at length, in compliance with their solicitations, accepted the high function. Up to the period of his elevation, he had led a virtuous life, but he now became addicted to amusement and sensual pleasure, and even aspired to the possession of Indrani, Indra's wife, whom he had appear- happened to see. The queen resorted to the Angiras of Rihaspati, the preceptor of the gods, who engaged to protect her. Nahusha was greatly incensed on hearing of this interference, but the gods endeavoured to pacify him and pointed out the immorality of appropriating another person's wife. Nahusha, however, would listen to no remonstrance and insisted that in his adulterous designs he was no worse than Indra himself. The renowned Ahalya, a rishi's wife, was formerly corrupted by Indra in her husband's lifetime. Why was he not prevented by you? And many barbarous acts and unrighteous deeds and frauds were perpetrated of old by Indra. Why was he not prevented by you? The gods urged by Nahusha then went to bring Indrani, but Brihaspati would not give her up. At his recommendation, however, she solicited Nahusha for some delay till she should ascertain what had become of her husband. This request was granted. The gods next applied to Vishnu on behalf of Indra, and Vishnu promised that if Indra would sacrifice to him, he should be purged from his guilt and recover his dominion, while Nahusha would be destroyed. Indra sacrificed accordingly, and the result is thus told. The End